for anyone that's not familiar with some of the things that we're talking about this morning, very quickly, uh, we uh, have an event. It's called Jubilee Day. It's in the city here. If you're not familiar with it, you can actually just Google it and find out. And we, we're talking about things like uh, dream interpretation and tattoo interpretation and piercing interpretation. Some of you might go, what in the world were you talking about? Never heard anything like that before. It's basically uh, the idea that God is speaking to people in a variety of ways. And sometimes when God is talking to people, they actually put it on their body and they don't even know it. There are things that are on their hearts and they, things that are deep inside of them. We believe that God is speaking to people and sometimes they get them put on their body. And so uh, from that, it's more of an introduction of, of interaction with people where you, you first interact with them according to you know, what they had put on their body, but in the process, we also are a church that believe that God still talks to people, that everything he said isn't just in the Bible, uh, but he's, he's still alive, he's still active, he's still part of us, and, and he's thinking about you. He's got things on his heart for you and for other people. The Bible tells us that he thinks about us more than the sand on the seashore, and that he, he is crazy in love with every single person. In fact, the Bible tells us that he counted you worth dying for. Jesus died for you because of the love that God has for you. He didn't die for you because God was angry at you. He died for you because he couldn't live without you. And so if God's heart is that way for people around us and he's thinking about them, then we just ask God to tell us, what do you think about this person? And we get to tell them something that they didn't know, maybe, that God thought about them. And so that's kind of what that stuff is about uh, and just some fun ways to interact with people. I, I had a few people that I was doing some tattoo interpretation, and one thing that stood out to me is, uh, well, it's fun, first of all, uh, when, when you're out ministering to people that, that haven't been taught uh, about things in churches. I love it. And they're, they're interrupting me. They're wanting to pull out their phones and show me videos and things that I'm talking about, confirming what we're, what we're saying. And they're like, oh, they're hitting each other and, and, and talking about it. And, and we had one thing that stood out to me was one a lady, she waited for over 10 minutes. I didn't even know she was doing this until later. She waited. She had got, gotten a massage, and her boyfriend had heard where I was doing some tattoo interpretation, and the person that, um, I think it was Nicole, was giving her a massage, I think. Somebody was. I can't remember. But um, told them also about the tattoo interpretation, and, and her boyfriend told her about it. So she waited while I talked to several other people and waited for over 10 minutes. Or was it you? Somebody. It was okay. And uh, um for over 10 minutes for me to do a tattoo interpretation for her. And so it was really fun. She was uh, just, God really met her in a powerful way. And uh, she was trying to hold back the tears, and God, God was just ministering to us. So it was fun. It was, you guys did so great. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of all of you. Let's think, I'm going to give you guys a hand. Give each, other, give each other a hand. You guys are amazing. That was so fun. And we are making room in our family, in our church, for people that don't have it all together like you do, <laughs> right? So as we are, are, are loving our community, and there are some people that might go, you know, I'll check that place out. And maybe they don't even know if they believe in God. Maybe, maybe they're gothic. We had from the testimony, I'm just saying that because of the testimony, it's funny. Uh, but the, maybe, they're, maybe they have stuff in their lives, Maybe they have some weird theologies. Maybe they're atheists, but they're, they somehow that you minister to them, and they said maybe there is something more to life, and they decide to come. And we're making room in our hearts and our church family for people that are just trying to figure stuff out, uh, that you don't have to have everything perfectly in line. You don't have to know everything you're supposed to do when you're supposed to stand up and sit down and what everything means. That's why when we talk, we, I, I do a lot of translation. I define things because we're setting a culture here for uh, people that can come in and get a feel for um, the things of God without having already needed to grow up, grow up in the church to know what's happening, right? And so it's really fun. Just love you guys. So excited, and, and we'll see where things land next year. Maybe we'll do it again, uh, but we'll, we'll see where we are. We have uh, over by our communion table, we have some more of these cards left over. If you didn't get a chance to see them, uh, this is, um, I believe it's Uncle Rico from um, Napoleon Dynamite. And there's a phrase from another movie on here, but it says, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good-looking. And I plan on finding out what, what that is. 
And so I'll, it's got a place here. Kathy put this together right here. She did a great job. It's got a place where these can be mailed. So I want to ask you guys to take these, mail them to your friends, hand them out to people. I mean, we got a bunch of them here, and so please take those. We also have these. If anybody wants to carry cards, I have, people regularly have asked me, do you have something I can hand out about your church or hand out about our church and uh, tell somebody about it? These are sitting over there, too. You can put these in your wallet, brief, your uh, uh, billfold or purse or whatever, and, and take these with you so as you guys are, feel you connect with somebody and want to invite them here, you have some things that you can do that with, all right? So let's get those out. Uh, they're really fun, and, and make room for people to come in here. Cool? All right, awesome. Well, now we're going to get into the message this morning. And I'm very excited, but I'm going to ask Joey to come and join me here. And uh, we are continuing on in a series called The Jays Have It. The Jays Have It. We're going through June and July. Let's start with Jay. It's very deep. Um, but I just felt like God wanted us to learn about some things in the Bible from characters in the Bible that their names are the books that they wrote start with the letter J. And so we're kind of continuing on with that theme here today. I'm going to open in prayer, and then we're going to get started. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Bible. I thank you that it matters and it's true for our lives. I ask that you would help us to understand it. I ask you to give us the strength to live it out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Awesome. Joey, you want to come on up? Uh, you guys know that Joey did over 400 balloons. And uh, we're going to be looking together at the story, at the book of Jonah. And uh, Joey's going to do a little illustration while we're doing this. For those that aren't familiar with the story of Jonah, we just want to do a quick review. So there's a book in the Bible, it has four chapters in it, and it's the book called Jonah. And in this particular story, you have a guy named Jonah that God comes and talks to. And God tells this guy, Jonah, I want you to go over to this really bad city where people are doing a lot of bad stuff called what? Nineveh. If you're familiar with the story, go over to Nineveh. And I want you to head over to Nineveh and tell them they're doing really bad stuff. And then Jonah decides, I really don't like the Ninevites at all, and I don't want to go over there. So Jonah decides he's going to do something else with his life. He decides that he's going to run the opposite direction with his life and do something completely different. So he goes and gets on a ship and goes the complete different direction. And we have here, we have here, Jonah is in his ship. Uh, he's, he's going on a boat to the opposite direction that's happening. And while this is going on, um, the Bible tells us that a big storm came over and was shaking the boat around, <laughs> and people were going crazy and getting seasick and didn't know what was going to happen. And then uh, he, he tells them what's going on. I think it's because of me, because I rebelled against God. And we need to do something about this. If you'll take me and throw me overboard, then I believe that you'll be saved and the storm will stop. And so they take this guy, they take Jonah, and they throw him over outside of the boat. And one thing that's amazing that happens is God prepares a big fish that comes over and swallows up Jonah. And he, he's inside of this fish for three days, three days, and he asked God to forgive him. One, two, three days. After he forgives, asked him to forgive him, then all of a sudden, the fish goes over and spits him out. Fish swims away. The fish swims away, and then Jonah is spit out on dry land. So he's going to stay there in the pocket for a minute, because right now, what's going to happen is Jonah hears from God again and says, I want you to go over to Nineveh. I haven't changed my mind. So he heads over. Oh, it's way over there. How'd that even happen? That's amazing. So he hears from God, goes back over to Nineveh, and uh, he tells them that in 40 days that God's going to destroy your city. Have a nice day. And he takes off and goes and finds a place to sit down because he really doesn't like Nineveh, and he wants to see it destroyed. And so he goes and finds a place where he can sit down, 
and find, watch the place be destroyed, right? He goes and sits down in a place. And then while he's sitting there, it's really hot. God causes a plant to grow up over Jonah and gives him some shade, and it's there for one full night. And then overnight, God call, sends bugs and causes it to die over, and the plant dies. <laughs> And then Jonah was very angry about the plants, and God, told, God began to speak to Jonah about his heart for the Ninevites, and ends up that he, the Ninevites asked God to forgive them. They were very sorry about the lives that they were living, and God saves Nineveh, has mercy on them, and in the process is teaching this little guy here about his mercy. Would you guys give Joey a hand? That was awesome. <laughs> All right, so that is a quick, ooh, Matt won the, the, the big fish. Oh, it just died. He just killed the fish. All right. Um, <laughs> so that's a really, really brief overview about the four chapters in the book of Jonah. And the book is called Jonah, and it tells the story of, of Jonah's journey here. But uh, I just want to give you an overview about kind of what happened in the story because I'm going to refer to a few things here. Uh, but really, this story isn't about Jonah. The book of Jonah is really about God, and it's about God's mercy that's misunderstood. I want to show you just real quick a few things to highlight. First of all is God's mercy to the sinner. Somebody say sinner. What a fun word right there. Don't you feel encouraged when you hear sinner? But here's the thing. Uh, Jesus didn't die for you because you are a sinner. He died for you because you weren't created to be a sinner. So when you're functioning outside of relationship with God, you're actually not functioning in the way that you were created to live. And, and sometimes people wonder, they, they, make, they make following Jesus about doing a bunch of good stuff or not doing bad stuff. And it's all about morality and, and what we don't stand for and, and what things are bad and evil. And in reality, we, we look at God and say, God just doesn't like to have fun. God's just mad at sinners all the time. And this is just how he is. He just wants us to, to, to live this way just because he does. But in reality, it's because God wants you to live at your optimal living capacity. And he knows the way that he designed you. God didn't design you to be bitter. You can actually find that out. If you live even in anxiety, if you live in bitterness or anxiety, it can, it can affect your physical body because your body wasn't designed to handle it. It's interesting to note that joy has the opposite effect, that if you're laughing and you have peace and joy in your life, it actually physically helps you out. Why? Because you're designed to be a joyful person. God, doesn't, God, God isn't the moral police because he's mad at everything. He is the life giver. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. It's not that you were a sinner and he's angry at you. It's that you are his child and he knows there's more for you. He knows there's a better way. He knows where real life can be lived from and he wants you to live that life. And here, when God comes and speaks to, to Jonah, he tells Jonah, go and tell the Ninevites. I see them. They're doing some really bad stuff. And, and it's interesting when you look at the story because Jonah was not told, go and tell them. If they say they're sorry, then nothing bad will happen. In fact, what Jonah was told is, go tell them 40 days from now, your city is going to be destroyed. That's all that he, was, that he was told. But Jonah knew God. So even though God said in 40 days, your city is going to be destroyed, Jonah knew that within that prophetic word, within that release of that, that message was hope, even though it wasn't said. God was releasing hope, and Jonah didn't like the hope that was given. And in reality, this is, is very interesting because if you look up some things about history, you'll find that Nineveh wasn't just a place where they did some some immoral things, but there were a place, there was a place that, um, that weren't very nice to the Israelites. And so God was sending somebody that had been oppressive to his people to minister to them. And that's part of why he wasn't excited about going there. But here's the thing. God didn't send Jonah to, to, make, to torture Jonah. He sent Jonah because Jonah could hear him. He sent Jonah because Jonah was in relationship with him. 
He wasn't trying to torture him. There's a belief that, that what God wants to do with your life is exactly what you don't want to do. And they used Jonah as an example. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, and that's really what God wanted him to do. And so we, it's this, the reality is God sent Jonah because of his love for the Ninevites. And when you're called to do something by God, it might cost you something. It might, sac- it might take a sacrifice on your part. You're not called to do something, to, to take time to pray for somebody, to give, to help, to love somebody in some way, to do something in our, in our community, in our region. You're not called to do that so that you feel purpose in life. God doesn't call you so that you feel important. He died for you to show you that you're important. He calls us to do things because other people are important. We are God's gift to them. We are the connection point between the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and their accepting of that. We're the, we're the bridge between the two. So God doesn't, have, God doesn't have me pastor this church so that I feel good about myself. He didn't call me for that. He wants me to do this because he wants to touch people in this region. And as we, we love the children in this, in, in this church, as we minister in the children's church, we do things in our community, as we do different kinds of outreaches, as we're, we're a part of things that are happening in this area, as we're inviting our neighbors over for coffee, as we're building relationship with people, as we're sharing the goodness of God with people, it's not so that we feel we have purpose in life. It's not so that we feel we're valuable and we're significant. We're doing that from significance. We're doing that from value. Because if we try to find our value, then though what we're called to do controls our lives, and it becomes our God. God called Jonah because of his mercy and love for sinners. And can I just say this? God has so much mercy for people outside the four walls of this building. He's crazy about people that are obnoxious, that are mean, that don't know him. They're living the best that they know how to do, but they don't know God. He's crazy about them. People have shaken their fists at him and have accused him and have misunderstood his mercy. They are doing very immoral things and not living the life they were created to. He's crazy about those people. He's crazy about sinners because they weren't created. They they weren't created to be that. They were created to be his children, just like you and I were. And we're sent to those people right? We're sent to bring his mercy. It's inconvenient sometimes, but they're so worth it. So Jonah, didn't re- he, he had an idea that God would have mercy, but he didn't share God's heart. So he knew God well enough that if the Ninevites said they were sorry, he would forgive them. But he was like, I'm not God. I'm not going to forgive them. Can I, can I ask you today to let your heart be broken with the things that break God's heart? Let your heart be moved by what moves him. Sometimes we look at the lives that people live, and we feel so justified to look down on them. And it's only by the mercy of God that we're not in the same place. We have to remember that. It's only his mercy. So we need to see those people as God sees them and not miss. This, is, this story is about revealing God's heart. That even in a message that sounds tough, what God really wants to happen is for transformation. He loves people so much. Second thing I just want to point out to you here today, it's God's mercy in your detours. How many here, you're following God, you end up at a place you you didn't quite think. (laughs) We have the detours that happen in life. Uh, You know, Jonah, he had some detours happen in his particular journey where he ended up in a fish. (laughs) And, of course, you hear Jonah and the whale. Probably we don't know if it was a whale. It just says a big fish. God prepared a fish. So it's literally where God may have designed and made a fish just for this particular moment. And God has mercy in your detours. That God literally designed a fish to be able to handle the detour that Jonah was going on and to bring him back around to where he needed to be because God was passionate about the Ninevites and, and sharing his message with them. I remember uh, being in uh, Mississippi. I had finished up uh, at, at a ministry school, and I had a couple of dreams. One of the dreams uh, was 
where I was went out to a field, and on my left hand side were a, a string of buildings of uh, tan brick buildings. And out between one of the buildings, Benny Hinn came walking out, and he had uh, um, a bat and a couple of gloves and, and a ball, and, and we played catch for a little while in the dream, and, and then he would throw me the ball, and I would bat it back to him, and we're just playing baseball out in this field, and I woke up, and uh, it, uh, it was very dramatic. The presence of God was extremely heavy in my room, uh, very tangible, and, and uh, it's hard to, hard to describe. That was one dream. Another dream I had was another well-known minister it's in uh, Louisiana, and uh, I was running with him. We passed each other a couple times going back and forth, and then we ended up in the middle of the street, and he said, do you know why I've called you here? And I said, no. And he said, because I'm going to go home and be with the Lord, and I'm leaving you my ministry. And then I woke up, and it was the same circumstance, a dramatic presence of God. And I I'm not saying the name of that minister because I don't want to make it awkward, but the, if I said him, many of you would know who he is. And so I moved over and tried to work for that ministry and couldn't even get a volunteer position. So I never, I never, I met the, I met the guy twice, got a tour of the ministry, but I couldn't even volunteer there. And part of that, I think I got blacklisted. I, I, I ended up sharing a dream. And so there's something you can learn from Joseph in the Bible. You don't always share your dreams. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I had this dream where you told me when you die, I'm going to have your ministry. So, yeah, can I come work for you? Um, that's probably why I ended up not working there. Could have something to do with it. Uh, and I was young, ignorant, didn't know, and I wasn't taking the dream to mean that he was about to die. And, uh, but, you know, you hear somebody come to your ministry, it just sound like a wacko, so, so stuff like that. So if you have a dream, you don't always share it, okay? Just letting you know. And uh, so in the process of that, I had somebody, I've been on my heart to, uh, I moved over to that area, didn't know anybody. And then some, I had also on my heart that to be in contact with someone I hadn't talked to in a long time. And I was being very frustrated because uh, I couldn't do anything. I moved all the way out there, didn't know anybody and moved out there. I got a call from that guy I had, hadn't talked to in over two years, didn't even know where he was at. And he said, hey, I've been calling around trying to find you. I'm living in Minnesota right now, and I just started going to Bible college. You want to come to go to school with me, and you can live in my house. I just got married, et cetera, et cetera. He told me some of his life. And so by the end of that month, I, I have lived in Mississippi. I moved to Louisiana, and then I moved to Minnesota and went to Bible college. And so the, the back story of this is I was adamantly against Bible college. I hated the idea. When I was growing up, they called it cemetery school instead of seminary because that's where you go to die spiritually, go to cemetery school. And so I was adamantly, I was like, I'm on fire for God. I'm not going to go to Bible college and die and spiritually and da, 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 this kind of stuff. And so I had to be brought to a place where I was even open to the idea. And because of the journey I went on and how frustrated I was, I was open to the idea of going there. And it was there that I met my wife at Bible college. Hallelujah. And so uh, that was God had mercy on my detour. He prepared a big fish. He had, actually, he, he had me encounter people I didn't even know where they were at and had me encounter them and brought me all the way up to Minnesota and brought me into a place that I would not have normally have gone. And it was through going to Bible college I ended up having relationship with a pastor that my wife worked on who ended up being the director of a school of the, and that's in this building, the former director who ended up inviting us to move out here, which ended up leading to where I'm at right now. And it all happened through that event because God prepared something for me and I had no idea that it was going to end up being where I'm at now. God works out some things for you guys. He's there in your detour. Maybe you're in a place you didn't expect yourself to be. Maybe you're, you're still in the fish, <laughs> and you're looking around, going, I was not planning on being in the fish. Maybe you just got thrown out the boat, you know, and you don't even see the fish yet. <laughs> you're, just out of the, you're, out of, you're flying in the air, in the water, and everything's chaotic. But I'm telling you, God has got you. God has got you. It's going to be okay, all right? He's there. This is about how God, God is taking care of people. The last thing here I want to point out is God's mercy in our learning. You see how Jonah acted in the story? It's pretty phenomenal. And God had so much mercy on him. Jonah is, is, has an attitude the whole time. The story doesn't even end with him going, God, you're right. 
I'm so glad you did something for an invite. It doesn't even end that way. It just ends. And it's just an interesting story. And he goes and gives his message. He doesn't say anything about God's mercy to them. He doesn't let them know that he knows God. And if they will say they're sorry about this whole deal, that he will not destroy their city. He doesn't tell them that even though he knows it. He knows it and he holds back the mercy of God from them. Even though he knows it. Do you hear me? He knows the mercy of God and he doesn't tell them. Not only that, after he tells them, he goes and finds a place to sit so that he can watch the city get destroyed. This is after he got thrown out of a boat. This is after he was in a big fish and was spit out. Okay? We're talking about our learning curve. And in that, when he sits out on this ledge waiting for this place to fall apart, God grows a plant supernaturally to give him shade. God, this is a story about God's mercy. His mercy is so great towards you guys. You know, the problem with being deceived is that you're deceived. You don't know that you are. You think you're right, and you're not. Jonah thought he was right. He didn't really fully grasp the heart of God. While we're learning things, God is having mercy on us. So much mercy. I want to tell you today that God is teaching you. He, he's got you in his hand. And he's speaking to you. He hasn't thrown in the towel and said, I'm giving up on that one. He hasn't given up on you. God's mercy is so great. Even if you haven't understood, even if you've blown it recently, even if you're like, man, I can't believe I did that. God is wanting you to know today his mercy is so great towards you. He wants to fill you fresh. He wants to touch you fresh. He wants your mercy to be with you. Here today as we close, I'm going to close in prayer. I just want you during this week to consider the lessons of Jonah. Consider God's mercy for the sinner. Trust God in your detour. And let him teach you some things that, and know that he hasn't given up on you. Even if you feel he should have, he hasn't given up on you yet. He's still teaching you. He still believes in you. He still wants to do incredible things through your life. Would you guys close your eyes? We're going to pray. Father, I bless every person here. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that you use them and Jubilee Day and do some incredible things in their lives. Uh, I thank you for the people that have been touched by your goodness. I ask for your presence right now. I ask for a real tangible sense of your mercy. Lord, I ask that you would give us your heart for those that don't know you. It's our, it's our desire to see the distant come into your destiny for them. Give us your heart and your message. And that there's hope. And Lord, give us the courage to speak out that hope. And Lord, I pray for anyone here that's on a detour in their life, for anyone that's watching this that feels like they're on a detour. They're, they don't know. Everything feels chaotic. I ask for peace right now. And Lord, I ask that you would prepare the future that you would prepare the way for them, that you would work out the details, send the big fish, whatever, God, send the thing, work out the details that will help them be where your design for them is for them to be, God. And, Lord, I pray for anyone that feels like I have blown it one too many times. Lord, let us remember the story of Jonah and your mercy how he was waiting for you to kill people and was very excited about it. And all the times you were teaching him and he still wasn't getting it, Lord, and you had so much mercy. I pray for a real sense of your mercy here today that these people have not blown it. The fact that they have wanted to not blow it demonstrates their heart to serve you and to love you. That's amazing. And I just pray for your peace to overshadow them, push out shame, 
and help catapult them into a new season because your mercy has set them free. I bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget Jonah this week. It's only four chapters. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Awesome. Would you come up here, please? I want to ask if uh, Eric and a few of you others, would you guys come up here and we're going to pray. Tell us your name again. Kelsey. Kelsey. We're going to pray for Kelsey. And... um, Especially some ladies. I love that the guys jumped up to pray. That's awesome. <laughs> serious. I'm serious about that. I love that. I want to have some ladies come up. We're going we're gonna to bless Kelsey here today. God has got her, his hand on her. Lord, we thank you that you have broken the power of depression yes. off of Kelsey because you didn't create her to be depressed. You did not create her to be anxious. You did not create her to feel invaluable or insignificant. You created her with intrinsic value. You created her to be filled with joy. You created her to laugh for no reason at all. You created her to be happy. You created her to be so full of life that all those around her experience life just by being around her. You created, I declare, I hear the Lord saying, you have a beautiful smile. You have a beautiful smile. And the Lord has seen you as a child He has seen where you've been at, and he has not forgotten about you. But this is a new time in your life, and it's time to lift your head, to smile, and to know that his hand is on you, that he is with you, and that he's absolutely crazy in love with you. So, Father, we bless this daughter of the king, and we welcome her home. We welcome her home. She's loved, she's accepted, and she belongs here. I thank you, God, that she belongs. In Jesus' name. Well, Father, we just bless. Right now, I'm going to release you guys just to pray for her. I'm going to close the service in prayer, but you guys just keep praying for her for a minute. <sighs> guys, this is what church is about. So I'm going to close our service in prayer. We're not done. You're free. We're, we're going to have a time where we have some snacks and stuff that's going on. You're welcome to stay and hang out together. Or you're free to go, depending on whatever you want to do. Uh, but family matters to us. Community matters. And so that's why we've made time in our service to have snacks and hangout time. So that, that's why I've done that, is to make room for family to get to know each other. So I'm going to close in prayer. You guys are dismissed. And you're also free to, to hang out. Um, after we hang out for a little bit, we're going to be resetting this room up for the school that meets here and doing some other things. Yeah, let's get a picture of this amazing. 
Father, thank you. I bless every person here. I thank you for true life. I thank you for transformation and grace. I bless every person here in the sound of my voice. And I ask that you would meet them in a special way this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Why don't you guys find, if you're on your way out, our, I forgot to say this, or anybody that's here their first time, we have um, a personalized art piece that we would like to give you. They are in, um, Ricky or anybody else want to go back there, they're, they're in the Welcome Center. In fact, if you want to just pull that whole thing in here, pull the whole booth in here, the, the gifts are in the shelf on there. And so if you're first time with us, please go here to our Welcome Center. We have a personalized gift we want to give you. And uh, again, we're going to move into our after-service hangout time. Love you guys. You're amazing. Jesus is crazy about you. Uh, love on somebody else around you. Say hi to somebody. If you don't know them, say hi to them. If you hear from God, give somebody a word today. On your, before you're out, find somebody you don't know. Tell them something encouraging that God thinks about them today. Let's, uh, let's do this.